the poesy of skalds section three now you shall hear how the skalds have termed the art of poesy in these metaphorical phrases which have been recorded before for example by calling it kvasir's gore and ship of the dwarves dwarves mead mead of the aesir giant's father ransom liquor of odrerir and of bodin and of son and fullness of these liquor of nitbjorg booty and find and gift of odin even as has been sung in these verses which einar tinkling scale wrought i pray the high-souled warder of earth to hear the ocean of the cliff of dwarves my verses hear earl the gore of kvasir and as einir tinkling scale sang further the dwarves crag song wave rushes o'er all the dauntless shield host of him who speeds the fury of the shield walls piercing sword bane even as ormir steintorsen sang the body of the dame and my dead be borne into one hall the drink of dvalin franklin's here and as refer sang i reveal the thought's drink of the rock folk to torstein the billow of the dwarf crag plashes i bid men hearken even as egil sang the prince requires my lore and bound his praise to pour odin's mead i bore to english shore and as glumr geirison sang let the princely giver hearken i hold the god king's liquor let silence then be granted while we sing the loss of thanes and as a vinder sang a hearing i crave for the high one's liquor while i utter gillinger's atonement while his kin in the kettle brewing of the gallows lord to the gods i trace even as einar tinkling scale sang the wave of odin surges of odrerir's sea a billow gainst the tongue's song glade crashes i our king's works are goodly and as he sang further now that which bodin's billow bodes forth will straight be uttered let the war king's host make silence in the hall and hear the dwarves ship and as eilifur gudrunerson sang grant shall ye gifts of friendship since grows of sun the seedling in our tongue's fertile sedge-bank true praise of our high lord even as vulustein sang egil hear the heart-streams of odin beat in cadence gainst my palate scary the god's spoil to me is given thus sang ormir steintorsen no verse of mine men need to fear no mockery i intertwine in odin's spoil my skill is sure in forging songs of praise thus sang ulfr ugason i show to host glad eilifir i show to host glad eilifir the heart fjord shoal of odin my song him do i summon to hear the gift of grimnir poesy is called sea or liquid of the dwarves because kvasir's blood was liquid in odrerir before the mead was made and then it was put into the kettle wherefore it is called odin's kettle liquor even as eyvinder sang and as we have recorded before while his kin in the kettle brewing of the gallows lord to the gods i trace moreover poesy is called ship or ale of the dwarves ale is lid and lid is a word for ships therefore it is held that it is for this reason that poesy is now called ship of the dwarves even as this verse tells the wit of gunlud's liquor in swelling wind-like fullness and the everlasting dwarves ship i own to send the same road section four what figures should be employed to paraphrase the name of thor thus one should call him son of odin and of jord father of magni and modi and thrudr husband of sif stepfather of ullr wielder and possessor of mjolnir and of the girdle of strength and of bilskirnir defender of asgard and of midgard adversary and slayer of giants and troll women smiter of hrungnir of geirudr and of trivaldi master of thialvi and ruskva foe of the midgard serpent foster-father of vingnir and hlora so sang bragi the skald the line of odin's offspring lay not slack on the gunwale when the huge ocean serpent uncoiled on the sea's bottom thus sang ulvir cut nose and crop ears 
the encircler of all regions and Eurd's son sought each other thus sang eilifr wroth stood ruskva's brother and magni's sire wrought bravely with terror thor's staunch heartstone trembled not nor thialfi's and thus sang eystein valdeson with glowing eyes thrudir's father glared at the sea road circler ere the fish's watery dwelling flowed in the boat confounding eystein sang further swiftly sif's husband bound him to haste forth with the giants for his hardy fishing well sing we hrimnir's horn stream again he sang the earth fish tugged so fiercely that ullr's kinsmen clenched fists were pulled out past the gunwale the broad planks rent asunder thus sank bragi the strong fiend's terrifier in his right hand swung his hammer when he saw the loathly sea-fish that all the lands confineth thus sang ganli while the lord of high bilskirnir whose heart no falsehood fashioned swiftly strove to shatter the sea-fish with his hammer thus sang torbjorn lady skald bravely thor fought for asgard and the followers of odin thus sang bragi and the vast misshapen circler of the ship's sea-path fierce-minded stared from below in anger at the skull-splitter of hrungnir again sang bragi well hast thou hewer in sunder of the nine heads of trivaldi kept thy goats thus sang eilifr the merciless destroyer of the people of the giants grasped with ready forearms at the heavy red-hot iron thus sang ufr ugason faintly the stout framed thickling a fearful peril called it at the great draught wondrous heavy drawn up by the lord of he-goats thus ulfr sang further the very mighty slayer of the mountain man brought crashing his fist on hymir's temple that was a hurt full deadly yet again sang ulfr vimur's ford's wide grappler against the waves smote featly the glittering serpent's head off with old tales the hall was gleaming here he is called giant of vimur's ford there is a river called vimur which thor waded when he journeyed to the garth of geirudr thus sang vetrlidi the skald thou didst break the leg of lichen didst cause to stoop starkadr didst bruise trivaldi thus sang torbjorn's lady skald thou didst smite the head of kaila smash kjallandi altogether ere thou slewest luter and Lydi did spill the blood of busera did hold back hengyankyapta hirokin died before yet sooner in like fashion svivur from life was taken section five how should one periphrase baldr by calling him son of odin and frigg husband of nanna father of forseti possessor of hringhorni and draupnir adversary of hudr companion of hell god of tears ufr ugason following the story of baldr has composed a long passage in the hustrapa and examples are recorded earlier to the effect that baldr is so termed section six how should one paraphrase nyrdr by calling him god of the vanir or kinsman of the vanir or wain father of freyr and freya god of wealth bestowal so says tordr sjarekson gudrun's self by ill her sons did kill the wise god bride at the wain side grieved men tell odin tamed steeds well twas not the saying hamdir spared sword-playing here it is recorded that skadi departed from jordir as has already been written section seven how should one paraphrase freyr thus by calling him son of njordr brother of freya and also god of vanir and kinsman of the vanir and wain and god of the fertile season and god of wealth gifts thus sang egil skalagrinson for that grotbjorn in goods and gear freyr and njordr have fairly blessed freyr is called adversary of belly even as eyvindr spoiler of skalds sang when the earl's foe wished to inhabit the outer bounds of belly's hater he is the possessor of skidbladnir and of that boar which is called gold bristle 
even as it is told here ivaldi's offspring in ancient days went to shape skidbladnir foremost of ships fairly for freyr choicely for njordr's child thus speaks ulfr uggason the battle-bold freyr rideth first on the golden bristled barrow boar to the bale-fire of baldr and leads the people the boar is also called fearful tusk section eight how should one paraphrase heimdallr by calling him son of nine mothers or watchman of the gods as already has been written or white god foe of loki seeker of freya's necklace a sword is called heimdallr's head for it is said that he was pierced by a man's head the tale thereof is told in heimdallr galdr and ever since a head is called heimdallr's measure a sword is called man's measure heimdallr is the possessor of guldtopper he is also frequenter of vagasker and singastein where he contended with loki for the necklace brisingamen he is also called vindler ufer uggason composed a long passage in the Husdrapa on that legend and there it is written that they were in the form of seals heimdallr also is son of odin section nine how should one paraphrase tyr by calling him the one-handed god and fosterer of the wolf god of battles son of odin section ten how should one paraphrase bragi by calling him husband of idun first maker of poetry and the long-bearded god after his name a man who has a great beard is called beard bragi and son of odin section eleven how should one paraphrase vidar he may be called the silent god possessor of the iron shoe foe and slayer of fenris wolf avenger of the gods divine dweller in the homesteads of the fathers son of odin and brother of the aesir section twelve how should vali be paraphrased thus by calling him son of odur and rinder stepson of frigg brother of the aesir baldur's avenger foe and slayer of hudr dweller in the homesteads of the fathers section thirteen how should one paraphrase hudr thus by calling him the blind god baldur's slayer thrower of the mistletoe son of odin companion of hell foe of vali section fourteen how should ullr be paraphrased by calling him son of sif stepson of thor god of the snowshoe god of the bow hunting god god of the shield section fifteen how should hunir be paraphrased by calling him benchmate or companion or friend of odin the swift of god the long-footed and king of clay section sixteen how should one paraphrase loki thus call him son of farbauti and laufi or of Nal, brother of bielister and of helblindi father of the monster of van that is fenris wolf and of the vast monster that is the midgard serpent and of hel and nari and ali kinsman and uncle evil companion and benchmate of odin and the aesir visitor and chest trapping of geirudr thief of the giants of the goat of brisingamen and of idun's apples kinsman of sleipnir husband of sigin foe of the gods harmer of sif's hair forger of evil the sly god slanderer and cheat of the gods contriver of baldr's death the bound god wrangling foe of heimdallr and of skadi even as ulfr uggason sings here the famed rainbow's defender ready in wisdom striveth at singestein with loki for about his sin sly offspring the son of mothers eight and one mighty in wrath possesses the stone ere loki cometh i make known songs of praise here it is written that heimdallr is the son of nine mothers section seventeen now an account shall be given of the source of those metaphors which have but now been recorded and of which no accounts were rendered before even such as bragi gave to aegir telling how thor had gone into the east to slay trolls and odin rode sleipnir into jutunheim and visited that giant who was named hrungnir hrungnir asked what manner of man he with the golden helm might be who rode through air and water 
and said that the stranger had a wondrous good steed odin said he would wager his head there was no horse in jutenheim that would prove equally good hrungnir answered that it was a good horse but declared that he had a much better paced horse which was called gold mane hrungnir had become angry and vaulted up onto his horse and galloped after him thinking to pay him for his boasting odin galloped so furiously that he was on the top of the next hill first but hrungnir was so filled with the giant's frenzy that he took no heed until he had come in beyond the gates of asgard when he came to the hall door the aesir invited him to drink he went within and ordered drink to be brought to him and then those flagons were brought in from which thor was wont to drink and hrungnir swilled from each in turn but when he had become drunken then big words were not wanting he boasted that he would lift up valhalla and carry it to jutenheim and sink asgard and kill all the gods save that he would take freya and sif home with him freya alone dared pour for him and he vowed that he would drink all the ale of the aesir but when his overbearing insolence became tiresome to the aesir they called on the name of thor straightway thor came into the hall brandishing his hammer and he was very wroth and asked who had advised that these dogs of giants be permitted to drink there or who had granted hrungnir safe conduct to be in valhalla or why freya should pour for him as at a feast of the aesir then hrungnir answered looking at thor with no friendly eyes and said that odin had invited him to drink and he was under his safe conduct thor declared that hrungnir should repent of that invitation before he got away hrungnir answered that asa thor would have scant renown for killing him weaponless as he was it were a greater trial of his courage if he dared fight with hrungnir on the border at grotunagard and it was a great folly said he when i left my shield and home behind at home if i had my weapons here then we should try single combat but as matters stand i declare thee a coward if thou wilt slay me a weaponless man thor was by no means anxious to avoid the fight when challenged to the field for no one had ever offered him single combat before then hrungnir went his way and galloped furiously until he came to jutenheim the news of his journey was spread abroad among the giants and it became noised abroad that a meeting had been arranged between him and thor the giants deemed that they had much at stake who should win the victory since they looked for ill at thor's hands if hrungnir perished he being strongest of them all then the giants made a man of clay at grotunagard he was nine miles high and three broad under the armpits but they could get no heart big enough to fit him until they took one from a mare even that was not steadfast within him with thor came hrungnir had the heart which is notorious of hard stone and spiked with three corners even as the written character is since formed which men call hrungnir's heart his head also was of stone his shield too was stone wide and thick and he had the shield before him when he stood at grotunagard and waited for thor moreover he had a hone for a weapon and brandished it over his shoulders and he was not a pretty sight at one side of him stood the clay giant which was called mukurkalfi he was sore afraid and it is said that he wet himself when he saw thor thor went to the meeting-place and thialfi with him then thialfi ran forward to the spot where hrungnir stood and said to him thou standest unwarily giant having the shield before thee for thor has seen thee and comes hither down below the earth and will come at thee from beneath then hrungnir thrust the shield under his feet and stood upon it wielding the hone with both hands then speedily he saw lightnings and heard great claps of thunder then he saw thor in godlike anger who came forward furiously and swung the hammer and cast it at hrungnir from afar off hrungnir lifted up the hone in both hands and cast it against him it struck the hammer in flight and the hone burst in sunder one part fell to the earth and thence are come all the flint rocks the other burst on thor's head so that he fell forward to the earth but the hammer mjolnir struck hrungnir in the middle of the head and smashed his skull into small crumbs and he fell forward upon thor so that his foot lay over thor's neck thialfi struck at mukarkafi and he fell with little glory thereupon thialfi went over to thor and would have lifted hrungnir's foot off him but could not find sufficient strength 
straightway all the aesir came up when they learned that thor was fallen and would have lifted the foot from off him and could do nothing then magni came up son of thor and jarnsaxa he was then three nights old he cast the foot of hrungnir off thor and spake see how ill it is father that i came so late i had struck this giant dead with my fist methinks if i had met with him thor arose and welcomed his son saying that he should surely become great and i will give thee he said the horse gold mane which hrungnir possessed then odin spake and said that thor did wrong to give the good horse to the son of a giantess and not to his father thor went home to thrudvangar and the hone remained sticking in his head then came the wise woman who was called groa wife of arvandil the valiant she sang her spells over thor until the hone was loosened but when thor knew that and thought that there was hope that the hone might be removed he desired to reward groa for her leechcraft and make her glad and told her these things that he had waded from the north over icy stream and had borne arvandril in a basket on his back from the north out of jutenheim and he added for a token that one of arvandil's toes had stuck out of the basket and became frozen wherefore thor broke it off and cast it up into the heavens and made thereof the star called arvandil's toe thor said that it would not be long ere arvandil came home but groa was so rejoiced that she forgot her incantations and the hone was not loosened and stands yet in thor's head therefore it is forbidden to cast a hone across the floor for then the hone is stirred in thor's head theodofer of Vin has made a song after this tale in the Hauslung. it says there on the high and painted surface of the hollow shield still further one may see how the giant's terror sought the home of gjotun the angry son of jord drove to the play of steel below him thundered the moonway rage swelled in the heart of Miley's brother all the bright god's high mansions burned before ullr's kinsman with hail the earth was beaten along his course when the he-goats drew the god of the smooth wain forward to meet the grisly giant the earth the spouse of odin straightway reft asunder no truce made baldur's brother with a bitter foe of earth folk rocks shook and crags were shivered the shining upper heaven burned i saw the giant of the boat sailed sea reef waver and give way fast before him seeing his warlike slayer swiftly the shining shield rim shot neath the cliff ward shoe soles that was the wise god's mandate the war of valkyries willed it the champion of the wasteland not long thereafter waited for the speedy blow delivered by the friend of the snout troll's crusher he who of breath despoileth belly's baleful hirelings felled on the shield rim circled the fiend of the roaring mountain the monster of the glenfield before the mighty hammer sank when the hill dane's breaker struck down the hideous caitiff then the hone hard broken hurled by the ogress lover whirred into the brain ridge of earth's son that the wetter of steel sticking unloosened in the skull of odin's offspring stood there all besprinkled with einridi's blood until the wise ale goddess with wondrous lays enchanted the vaunted woe rust ruddy from the wain god's sloping temples painted on its circuit i see them clearly pictured the fair boss shield with stories figured i had from torleifer end of section seventeen recorded by expatriate in bangor maine